for Europe, this is about, as I said at the beginning, whether we are going to be effective or not. To be effective in our neighbourhood is the proof of the European Union foreign policy project. And I think we have to and we have committed to be there, not just for the short term, but for the medium and the long term, because this is a long term job. We've rewritten our neighbourhood policy to build on three ends. Money, getting additional resources into the area. So as well as the 5.7 billion euros we already had earmarked, we've added another 1.2 billion. Getting other investors, so getting the European Investment Bank to add another billion euros a year for the southern neighbourhood, while continuing to support what's needed to be done in the east. And the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development responding to my request, working with others to add two, two and a half billion a year each year over the next few years in public and private sector investment to get business moving <coughs> and to get the infrastructure in place. I think as well, the building of the political parties, as I've said, and the building of the political process to provide the kind of long term support that's going to be necessary, helping them with their electoral observation so that you can see that the elections are done properly, supporting them in security issues. Libya border management is a big issue, concerns about the reform of the security sector, police reform and so on. So important as you move into democracy and you build confidence in the people that they can rely on uh, those institutions to operate on their behalf, supporting their human and fundamental rights as well. And trying to do that in the context of all that big support. So three M's, money, which I've just described, mobility, offering the support, especially for young people and for businesses to take advantage of educational opportunities in the European Union, business opportunities in the European Union, and supporting them in doing that. Recognising this is a young workforce that we're going to need in the European Union into the future. And market access, the third M. How do we support them through trade to enable them to grow their economies and to get the kind of support that they need? Bearing in mind that as their markets grow, they provide markets for us. All that within the backdrop of recognising that if we can support our neighbourhood into the future, it will be to our advantage as well.